<laughs> Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Yes, it's finally time to start doing some actual, I'm going to say work, but video work. And we're going to kick it off with this box of something that's been sent to me by the Dutch Retro Gamer. He has a YouTube channel. He's into games, but also he's into electronics. So I think this was an electronic kit he sent me. Um, but it feels like there may be more in there. So there's a car, a note attached, and I shall read it. Uh, Hi, Dr. Acer. Here are the goodies I promised. The Walkman, etc. I really love your channel. You're awesome. Keep up the good work. Greetings from the Dutch Retro Gamer, aka Chris. What a lovely thing to say. Thank you so much, Chris. And uh, I just noticed as I put uh, Chris's letter down, there's, uh, there's actually some other stuff here that we've made. There's like so many kits. I'm going to do a kit giveaway, by the way, if you want any of the old kits. Wowee. Fantastic. So I actually, it's amazing. I forgot about the Walkman. So Chris, thank you so much. I forgot about the Walkman and it would have been, I can't remember when we talked about this. It was over Christmas a few days ago or so. Amazing. Amazing. So it's so funny because I think it was about the Walkman and you were throwing in the kit and now I remember there was a kit but I forgot there was a Walkman. So ooh, two things to go through. Now the reason the Walkman's interesting to me by the way is because I have a quite a big collection of Walkman and VHS players and things growing right now. Unintentionally, of course, but uh, they all seem to be a bit dead, so we might be doing some Walkmen. But let's have a look at the electronic things first, because uh, I feel going through this is looks so classic. It's something that deserves its own video uh, in a future video there. Look at that, all these pots. Let's put you aside, though. I don't want to damage you with soldering iron. Right, so first things first, a couple of really snazzy looking voltmeter modules. I'm going to zoom right in on those because you're going to want to get up close and personal with them. Just to show you the size, that's my fingertip, so they're actually quite small. Um, but if you flip them over on the back, they've got like a whole big IC there, like a driver for the screen. Can I read the number on it? Probably not. Um, regulator. And then there's even a little trim adjuster in there. And there's just a few passives in between. So interesting enough, that chip's doing everything. And it could just be a microcontroller, because if you think about it, a microcontroller have the analog to uh, digital input circuitry and be able to drive the screens however it wants. And it can actually pulse them. So sometimes there's a trick where you get rid of, you basically don't use some of the resistors you should be. Uh, but instead of uh, uh, so, but the LEDs won't be overdriven because you're pulsing them very quickly. Right, I'm looking for a voltage source because I think I want to test these, and I'm kind of uh, there's no spec with these, so I'm just going to be very ginger about what we do. So I've got some test probes. Let's pop those on. That could be quite nice. I mean, this these would be brilliant sort of panels, wouldn't they? I, I kind of like the idea of. I've got like an old Atari ST that's my more retro scuzzy one, if you if you know what I mean. And uh, it's got it's been tinkered. Someone's cut the case and all of that sort of thing. So it's the one I put my GoTech in. And I feel I'd quite like to maybe add something like this if I ever you know try to fix the case up. So it's glowing blue. You probably don't see that at that level, but it's glowing blue. And it is. I'm just going to turn it up very gently. Right. So. My main voltmeter on the power supply, which you can't see, says 2.79, and this is measuring 2.7 8. So that's not bad, is it? I mean, it's pretty close, but it's pretty dim. But oh, there you go. Three volts, it's happier. Definitely brighter at three. But I'm almost scared now. I don't know where the maximum will be. I'm going to. I'm looking at the current. I'm looking at the. Do you think it's going to go over 10? I. Chris, I don't want to kill it. I'm not intentionally killing it, by the way. Yeah, it's going to go over. In fact, <laughs> I'm being a bit uh, bit silly, really, because we could just check there. It is uh, a 7133H. A the reason I'm sort of checking that, I think it has got a voltage regulator on there. Is it 7133? Would that be a 3.3 volts? Could those be 3.3 volt LEDs? 
We'd have to go through that in detail, see how that works. But we know it's good probably up to 10 volts at least. It'd probably be good for 12. That's more than enough for what we need for most of our retro projects. So thanks for that, Chris. And we're going to have a look at this kit. So it's a mystery kit. It's a bit uh, raggedy though. It looks like it's been around the block a little bit. I'm going to let out the, let out the beasts. Oh! And we're probably not going to be able to get too far on this kit today unless I do some research because it says R1, R2, R3. It's got the resistors listed, but it doesn't have the values. So that would take a serious amount of debugging here. But it does say on it, it's a two times 15 watt stereo PCB. So it's an amplifier circuit. And I'm just sort of trying to see what, if there's any connectors. So we've got the amplifiers. Look at this. This is gorgeous package. Look how they do that. Isn't that groovy? So we just pop those straight into the PCB like thus. And you could put little heat sinks on these. They'll look really bling with some heat sinks going on. Um, but I'm not seeing, worryingly enough, I'm not seeing any uh, I.O. pins. So we've got capacitors. We've got diodes. I mean, there's not too much on here, really. Um, and then there's just a couple of pins here, which could be for the power, but you'll want the audio in somewhere. Ah, there's something here on the side. Plus, minus, zero, W-Y. Hmm, mysterious. Huzzah! I found it. I found it. I found it on a Polish website. So I couldn't really make out most of the uh, characters, but I found a picture. So I thought, well, we could just make it to the picture. And that's handy for me because I can never remember uh, resistors, can I? So let's start with the resistators. I'm just going to pop them all on here. And then we'll just do it by the numbers. I couldn't find instructions. That was the other bit that was slightly annoying. So it really was just the uh, picture. But I don't know if you buy the kit if it comes with instructions. It probably doesn't, though. Otherwise, uh, I'm sure they'll just shove them in the bag with everything else. No, yeah, hang on a minute. I might still need instructions at some point when I want to come to hook this up. But I can see here, there's something there. There's some pins, I.O. pins here, I.O. pins there. And there's definitely four pins here on the board. So I'm guessing that's what they are. Oh, joy of joys. Look at the quality of the print now. We have to see, does that match up? Does that match up? It's definitely not the best way of doing it if you're ever going to do a kit. I would advise trying to get some instructions, but those look maybe the same. And it will matter. I think that's something uh, you will have to appreciate. Ah, but look, it's a duplicate. You only have to get it right once, because you'll get it right the second time then if you do. Um, let's follow. I think that could be that one. I'm, I'm going to do them independently, and then we're going to compare the resistors afterwards yeah I think I think that's good I think that's that's how it goes so let's let's begin and uh, I was rooting around the other day and I did come across the uh, little gadget that Brian Jones aka power, Pover that's two V's power crazy but it's really Pover crazy made for me and that's a resistor leg bender so I'm going to try a bit of bending Bend it like Beckham. So this will be my R1. Now I can't tell you the uh, values again. If you want to know the values from reading off a resistor, you need the old Big Clive. And uh, now I've discovered the right pitch. I'm just going to go and pre-bend all of my resistors for this side. So I hope you've had a, a lovely uh, Christmas, of course or a holiday period you know and not everybody celebrates christmas but i think most people will have a holiday period if they can get away with it um i for one find it weird it's um several days now since the official end of christmas which is the sixth of course which is epiphany um but it still feels maybe a tiny bit a tiny bit Christmassy, but what's weird is how we it all just we, the decorations get shoved away, don't they? Right away, and you think, hang on, it's still winter, why can't we have wintry decorations up and still wear Christmassy, Christmassy style jumpers, but not necessarily with reindeers on? It's weird, it's not really a it's not a good time of year to just say, okay, we're done, let's put away those woolens. 
So you can see I'm wearing some woolens. Right, let's get this resistor 11 in. Resistor 13. So did you have any mince pies? Oh yeah, I had surprisingly few mince pies, I have to admit, over a Christmas, and I feel the need to go get some. Interesting enough though, I did have some panettones, and I had a one of those artisan fancy panettones, and actually it was really good, so that did make a difference. They <laughs> are I could taste the difference. Ironically though, I was in Paris for a sort of day trip with work, and uh, on the way back in Heathrow Airport there was a Costa Coffee which had mini tiny panettones and that was really close to the artisan one. It was very moist and fruity, so surprisingly good for a Costa. Okay, let's just get the old solder in going. I'm in two minds here, whether I just tack... Um, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. I was, gonna, I was thinking whether will I just tack solder one leg and then faff around, push them down flat. It's like, nope. I'm going to push down on the solder nine as I apply the solder, and that's keeping that component flattened down. And I think it's flattened down enough, but we'll see. You'll see there. I was watching a bit of Bob Ross, you know, and I was sort of thinking to myself, oh yeah, let's let's be a little bit more like a bit more like Bob. There's a happy little solder joint there. Should we zoom in a bit? I'm sure you boys and girls at home to see a bit of these these happy solder joints hanging out with each other me not getting annoyed by the board skitting around skitting around look at that look at that indeed right let's give it the old the old chop So if you had uh, a similar amplifier, what do you do with it? I mean, I'm thinking of some use cases here. I would probably, myself, maybe use it like for an arcade cab or something. I mean, this looks like a beefy thing, and I'm not really one, uh, you know, knowledgeable of amps. I wouldn't be able to tell you. You know, they have these class A and class B and class whatever. I'm not sure if the class of the amp refers to its efficiency or its amount of power it chucks out. I can tell from the uh, amount of heat sinking you can put on these components. It looks like you should, you know, it's, it intends to be used to drive something reasonably beefy. Okay, so that's the resistor stage. The next thing I'm going to put on, I think, are the electrolytic capacitors because no, let's go for the diodes. Let's go for the annoying diodes and then the electrolytics. And the reason I'm going to go for the electrolytics because they're going to act as standoffs of the ceramic caps. And then we'll poke the ceramics in. I don't want to put the ceramics in from the top and bend them accidentally. So that's my logic and I'm sticking to it. So let's get those diodes underway. This is a great tool. I, I really wish I wouldn't keep mislaying it. To be fair, I don't do much through hole these days. It's, it's all about the surface mount, isn't it? You kids and your crazy BGAs. Comments down below though if you know what a BGA is. I think it's a pretty pretty easy question for the, most of you guys who watch this channel. Pop that in there. One more for luck. D12, D2 and D12. I wonder if all the components are just 10 apart. So you've got C4, C14, C3, C13. Of course you do. Of course. Pop that in there. I'm just going to apply these nice and quick. I'm not going to do the old zoomy in. You know what it looks like. These diodes are rather nice chunky chunky leads on them it does make you wonder how many uh, how many amps they can handle I suspect a reasonable amount ooh we go. we've got two for one there two for one all done up yeah that 
that's not looking too bad if the old camera would care to focus itself just that one a little bit hmm a little bit too high but i'm going to i'm going to let that one go i think we're going to give that pass aren't we sometimes you've just got to chill out go with the flow right time to have a little clean up here what's next Electrolytics. So let's sort that out. It looks like there's three sizes here large, medium, and small. Of course, they do have a polarity if you're doing them. So let's see what we've got though. We've got four. There's a hundred. There's a hundred. Please be a hundred. There's another hundred. There's another hundred. Phew. That would have been tricky, you see. If it was uh, two more values, you wouldn't know which, uh, which place to put those in. So that's the C4 that away. Oh. Hmm. They're clearly the biggest component, but they're not quite the right leg spacing for that, so that's kind of annoying. We'll just do it anyway. What can we do? Long leg positive, by the way. Remember the old long leg positive if you're doing these. They are marked on those. Long leg positive. Just pushing those through. And the last one. So while I'm solving these, I'm going to tell you I've been watching on YouTube right now. It's absolutely. You know that I watched this really random selection of things so one week it's history one week it's all urban exploring is my thing um one week it'll be all about tanks or romans or something like that so the last couple of weeks have been about chemistry so i've gone off the old quantum physics and i'm now on to chemistry and it looks fascinating i mean chemistry it's almost like a pseudoscience i'm not sure how it's classed. I'm pretty sure it works obviously but I don't think it's a science. It's definitely more of an art. It's like cooking. Cooking with chemicals that can kill you. And uh, you can just make all of these fascinating things. I'm sure chemists would argue that it is a oh <laughs> these components look ever so bloody similar. Would tell you it's a science but I don't know if it is really. 22 microfarads and a one microfarad. Dang it. I'll have to put those aside, do more research on that. Now let's have a look at these other ones. Let's check the ceramics while we're at it. So we've got a 104, 104, 104, 104, 104, please be 104. They're all the same. So at least we can get ahead with the ceramics. Chris, you're really, you're really testing me now. You're testing my ability to go on Google the patience to go on Google and try to find this board. I'm tempted to not put a link to this board, by the way. I'm going to not put a link to this board in the uh, search down below. So if you want to find it, you've got to type 2x15w stereo and see what you can come up with. If you do know the pinouts, though, of the chip, it's a TDA2030. You would probably be able to quite easily figure out which resistors and which um, capacitors go in where. So I suspect it will be based on its reference design for that amplifier. So we've got one more ceramic in the pile. That's all the components, by the way, on here now. Um, where would that go? Must be just by this. In fact, I'm almost sure little things like this ceramic probably work without it though. There would be some maybe on the input to remove any AC. No, sorry, I meant DC. <laughs> remove AC. Well, that would be redonkulous to do that. Right, just put that there. Now these will need to be tack soldered because... Ooh, that one's almost escaped. Because they're lower now than the highest components on the board. 
So just do one leg. And then flip it over and have a look. See which ones have gone wild. And you can see there's one cap gone wild there. We're going to bring him back down. We're going to take you down to Chinatown. And the rest, they look fine. You get a little bit of a, a sixth sense when you're doing these. You know when it's gone wrong. You'll know. Trust me. And on the subject of senses, by the way, I was reading about that. And you know how humans have five senses, but they have way more senses than that. It's like, I can't remember how many senses you have. It's absolutely more than that. So if you do know the answer to how many senses a human has, feel free to let me know. I'm trying to think of an example of one, though, that isn't a... Uh, isn't often recognised. It's something like a sense of foreboding, a sense of doom. Right, and then the last things we're going to put on are the TDA 2030s before I've got to go and do that last bit of research. But when I do that last bit of research, I shall make the effort, of course, to figure out how you actually hook this up to an audio source. Bearing in mind, of course, all of our fancy schmancy phones these days don't seem to have any bloody headphone output, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use as an audio source. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I do have that mini disc player I bought for £7. That's quite a good one. The downside is it's like a stereo, home stereo type mini, mini disc player rather than a Walkman one. Slightly oh, less useful. I miss my Sony NetMD. OK, right. We're on the final stretch here. I'm going to find out how to hook up these last components and I'll be back. Yes, great success. Managed to find a uh, kind of printout, def a kind of printout, an actual PDF of the kit. And it's got the schematics and the Schemat Montazu. And indeed, C1 and C11 are two microfarads. Oh, well, hang on. Hmm. It says two microfarads, this is one. I think it's close enough. Long leg positive. So that's the littlest one, by the way, if you just so happen to have this same bill of materials, the smallest one there. Now, it's still going to be tricky to work out which are the uh, ins and which are the outs and where the power should go, but I'm confident we shall figure this out somehow. There we go, nice and quick. So let's have a little look at that schematic there. So we can see the two, two circuits basically a duplicate of each other, left and right. So in left and ground, in right and ground, plus VS and minus VS. Oh, crikey, look at that. That's odd, isn't it? So they've potentially each, are they actually really totally separate circuits? They are. You could, apart from the ground, so that's the second pin's probably the ground, the rest are uh, totally separate. Which is interesting, really, because they've got these uh, pins here for something. There's two sets of pins there, but it's going to between ground and something else. So that could be one of the inputs. In fact, that's going in via that one or two microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So there's the one microfarad. So that could be the left. Oh, that's the input. And then you've got the other three pins. So yeah, the, although you've got four pins here, I'm not sure they had an input here. Why would you need the four? In, uh, input, two outputs, and a ground and power. Okay. I'll suss it out. Let's hook it up to something. 
So I've been working diligently on this and I've figured out how to wire it all up from the schematic. So if you've got the schematic, that's all you need really. All I did was look for the main components here and then trace the circuit back, so I figured that out. So I'm just hooking up the audio input. So I've basically massacred a headphone cable or a headphone type cable. And I'm going to zoom in and show you where all the other connections went. I'm going to put that there. So if you have a look closely, we have one speaker connected to these two outer wires and the other speaker again t connected to the two outer contacts and if you gingerly turn it over they're the ones labeled plus and minus on here so it's not power plus and minus it's the speakers and then you have two other uh, inputs kind of designated maybe O and Y it's hard to make out exactly what they are but those are the power here and you can check that out if you have a look at the circuit again and see which leg the electrolytic capacitors are hooked up to so that's basically it and I've made a little window splice. I've connected both circuits together in parallel on the power. I'm not sure why they didn't add a track for that. It's possible that maybe this was designed so that you could cut the circuit board in half. I'm just going to turn this over now. we get some sound going on. No idea on the voltage, no idea or nothing. In fact, I say no idea on voltage, it might be there. Oh, hang on. I see a 20 volts. It does say it does say 20 volts up there, so maybe you can wang it up quite high. Just stop this from jumping off. Right, that's stable. So I'm going to turn on the power. Let's see if we. Oh, there was a nice little ka chunk. Implies it's working. Now I did find this old Sony Walkman. So there you go, I've got an MP3 Walkman. We got all the Walkmans here. <laughs> Just need the mini disc again now. So we've got some music library. I don't know what this was even. Oh, I do hear some sound though. Or am I imagining it? Am I? I thought I could have sworn I heard something, but I'm just going to do play all. Okay, so it's. No, definitely seems to be playing something. Oh, there we go. That's spinning around. So we're going to turn up the power on 6.8 volts. Oh, yeah. I. Whoa! I. Whoa! I. Whoa! <laughs> that was impressive. Woo! Okay, so that was a bit of Aphex Twin. And we rather dramatically blew out the capacitors. So I obviously didn't wire that up quite right. <laughs> oh my gosh! That was explosive. I that scared the life out of me. Funnily enough, though, nothing else is warm. Uh, the power supply was maxing out at two amps, so the two amp warning was coming in there. Strangely enough, though, I could hear the uh, sound there. So something very odd there. So I'll have to replace those capacitors and uh, try to figure out what I was doing. So if you're following at home, following along at home. Be very careful because uh, I clearly have gone wrong. So there we go. What can I say? Thank you very much again to Chris for sending that in. And uh, yeah, explosive result. Thanks for watching. I'd like to make a special shout out to my patrons. I know a lot of you are in my Discord and we converse, but a lot of you also do it silently behind the scenes. So to the lovely people who support the channel, Adrian King, Andrew Beer, Andrew Dalton, Bjorn Eckert, Bloody Cactus, Brian Edwards, Bruce Morger, Chinny Hill, Chrissy, Dan Stott, David Klasnink, Dubious Engineering, Dustin Punt, Eagle Stalland, Erwin Beerhoff, Gary Pinkett, Hannah Cass, I Fix It. Joe, Jonathan Smith, Kevin Lee, Lorne Smith, Martin Withhagen, Michael Turner Craig, Nostalgia Nerd, Pamela M. Toynton, Retro Man Cave, Rob Taylor, 
Robert Rowland, Steve Green, Tech Moan, Tim Nichols, Verdi RD, and Zed.